here I've got a Kodak Retina 2A camera it's come here for servicing of course it's got a few issues um, certainly something odd about the film advance there's apps, no action on the counter at all so the frame counter pull or spring is broken I would say um, absolutely no ratchet action there at all somebody screwed on an accessory on the top of the shutter release there uh, nicely made out of brass provides a nice easy place to put your finger what else is wrong with it? focus is stiff feels like it's very likely the focus scale ring is shifting on the helical the focus the front standard seems to be a bit rattly there's a lot of movement there, far more movement than there should be you can see that the whole shutter and focus mount shifts on the front standard there probably screws that hold the focus uh, helical mechanism to the front standard loose there I would think there's none of the neither of the uh, cartridge paper shims under those arms present so that will certainly um, contribute to some of this rattle so a few little things going on there I think um, the headline fault of this camera apparently was that the film advance is sometimes stuck and didn't want to return to the park position I suspect that's just components that are gummed up and are failing to move correctly so I'm going to strip this thing down and uh, find out what's going on so I'll start with the film advance lever the screw on the top is loose means somebody's been in there of the screw and there was a washer which was busy trying to get away or retrieve that and here what have we got there is our spring our pull or um, sp spring it's it's present but obviously it wasn't working now oh, it's buggered it's very soft that's just going to snap off there it goes so it needs a new pull that's why the frame counter wasn't working the other components in here nothing remarkable just dirty so that's our frame counter problem away now what's going on here this there's parts missing here there's supposed to be a latch here that holds the lever and locks it in position when the frame counter reaches number one that's all missing let's find out what's going on there So this camera certainly looks like one of life's um, casualties because there's no frame counter lock let's have a look now is that the parts are missing completely so the latch that sat in here and its return spring aren't even present they're gone this rubber pad that's stuck on here that's not an original it's thicker than it should be and it doesn't extend the full length the problem with something like that being too thick is it means that the arm might not return neatly back against the top cover um, well enough to allow the action to return in here in the film advance so there's a problem let's carry on rewind knob comes off and the piece from underneath it one screw at each end of the top cover
top cover that looks um, pretty unremarkable I don't see anything major wrong there I can see that the shoe the accessory shoe has been stretched slightly probably by having some unsuitable flash forced into it but nothing else other than that nothing to show the range finder it's not even very cloudy uh, somebody may have cleaned that in comparatively recent times the screw is loose it certainly means someone's likely to have been in here with a loose screw on the range finder the chances of it staying correctly adjusted are minimal The uh, secondary image in the rangefinder, oh yeah, it's bright enough, it's even, even reasonably well aligned, so that's quite good. That'll clean up well. Film release button, that spring on the film release button doesn't look like the original to me. That suggests that the original has been lost. I lift off the shutter release, it's return spring, the collar from the base, the release itself, the release button and the collar from the top, so they're all present and correct. Here we can take the spacer off the top, the film advance, and lift that gear up. I'll unhook the spring from the behind this catch here and I've got three screws holding this bracket in place one with the spring one at the back here and one here and lift that off lift that off I'm interested to see the spring that's in there. That does look like the correct spring. Let's see if these components will lift off. Nothing uh, particularly notable there, but dirty. Certainly nothing unusual. This pull, that's working correctly, that can come off. Three screws hold the top of the bush here in place. Those screws are loose. That will not have helped the film advance because it means that things will slot backwards and forwards slightly. Lift out the clutch, pull that apart, that's dirty and greasy, dirty and uh, full of grit and dust. What's left, I will take out the uh, rewind shaft and collar, these screws are again loose. At the base of the camera, two screws on the tripod socket surround, and we have to peel the leather back.
the two A's cameras had real leather stuff that actually grew on an animal's back unlike later cameras which had leatherette this looks like it's been re-glued before it suddenly gets very stiff at this point that tells me it was probably peeled back to that point previously and no further I want to remove the struts from the camera complete so I've got to get it a screw that's back at this point I know from experience that where you peel the leather part way back and then glue it back down you're left with an obvious line afterwards so what I tend to do with these is I make sure I peel the leather all the way back to this point so that uh, any crease you see from that process is pretty much disguised down at the end of the camera rather than having an obvious line at this point now that cut at that point I've got to be a bit careful not to tear it but that once that's glued back down that'll disappear here's the screw I need to get at to uh, get to those struts Yeah, that leather there is really reluctant to uh, come up. And contrast on this side, it's moving freely. that's all I need, I just need it back that far so here what have we got, we've got two screws here, now that screw is a countersunk head screw and typically they're not what's the other one? that's brass, that's an original, this is not an original screw I bet that the brass screw has been transferred over here because that screw appears to be very loose let's have a look the brass screws are not a countersunk screw yes that's the case so someone had taken a screw from here and put it here by mistake um, these other screws are steel the brass screws of course are a little bit softer and we're not fit for that purpose so we know that someone has been fairly deep into the base of this camera at some stage in the past I'll just unhook that spring take that screw out of course when a camera is um, 65 plus years old it probably does have some history take out that shaft lift out our advance our take up spool and here I need to get the rewind button off I've got to find the tool Let's 
Remove that screw. And there's our sprocket shaft out. Now we're getting down deep into it. So, the hinge pins for the front door. Those two screws I want out. On the Retina 2A they are not the same as the screw on the sprocket shaft. There's one washer at the bottom of that hinge, a bigger one at the top. Just lift that door off. That's quite stretched. I didn't need to apply much force at all to get that off. Now I can see here, I told you there was movement, too much movement in here. Well I can see this screw at the top here which holds the struts mechanism into the body. I can see it moving. I doubt whether you can, but I can certainly see that moving. So I know that screw's loose. There, look at that. It's loose. Yeah, that stiffened up immediately when I did that screw up tight. So that screw was loose. That's part of the reason the front of the camera's floating around a bit. Anyway, remove the shutter next. Push back my pile of parts. I'm starting to get buried. Of course, if you were doing this job, you'd be laying all these parts out neatly in trays along with their appropriate screws after having taken great note of where everything fitted. That was just the shutter releasing there. The shutter out. I'll put the retainer ring away with that. Let's look at this. So, I said that the focus scale ring appeared to be loose, and I can see it's pulled over the head of the screw at this point, and probably at that point. We'll remove this ring. This ring couples to this post here, and this post acts on the rangefinder arm. So we'll remove that. I'm pleased I found that loose screw holding the struts mechanism into the body. That means it's much more likely that the struts mechanism is not damaged in some terrible fashion and that with a bit of a clean up and adjustment and tightening the screws up it'll work well. So that piece is off. Now we can look at this focus scale ring. So the screw here is correctly positioned but it's loose. That screw's working. That screw is working. This one was too loose to be doing anything at all. And the other one is chewed off. The screw head's damaged. It's pulled out past the edge of the focus scale ring. If I put that in a different position, there's every likelihood that a good part of that screw head will be bearing against the focus scale ring and it won't cause me any problem. The other looseness issue. I said that the screws holding the focus scale to the front standard were probably loose. And you can probably see that these screws here, these four, are all loose. I'm just going to collapse the bellows and undo the four screws that hold the bellows to the back of the front standard, to these four black ones.
pull the struts forward, the bellows remain back in the body. If we remove these four loose screws here, they're only hanging on by a very small amount. You can put your own phrase in there. Remove those four screws, which are only sticking in place with dirt and grease at the moment. Right. Here, two screws hold this shroud on the front of the gear that cocks the shutter. Take that apart. Here's the other screw. We're down to the struts mechanism. Got to get this out of the body. Make sure that shaft comes up through its hole. That's good. Well, we know that one screw was loose on the top. In fact, I've already removed it. There are two screws down here in the film cassette well. That one there. And that one there. Now, normally I have to use uh, some brutal techniques to get those ones loose. Those ones came apart very easily by comparison. And we have one last screw here in the base of the camera, which again is loose. So that explains all the movement of the struts. The struts can come out now. Here is the cocking shaft that carries the action from the cocking rack in the camera body through to the shutter. Here's the little bracket that holds that in place. Turn spring for the shutter release. There should be a, a spacer washer here, and there is. So that body is stripped down. Um, just looking to see if I need to do anything special with this. I need to find out whether the leather is loose. Uh, the original adhesive, adhesive is probably very good because the adhesive here was very good. There's Zeiss bumps at these points where there are rivets through the hinges. And on this side where there's a rivet and a screw here, that's quite um, prominent. I probably won't lift that leather off entirely. I'm going to lift it at this point where it's obviously loose and lifted up and scrape out the mess, clean it, and glue that back down. Uh, there's no point fighting with old leather. There's every likelihood you'll damage it. So that's the body, and that's dealt to. Let's, so we've got six screws hold the retainer on the, for the focus helical mechanism here. These six screws are the same size as the four screws that held the focus scale ring in place. So if you have a screw with a damaged head on the focus scale ring, you can wrap, you can rob one of these screws to replace it. Here's the retainer. We have the four screws that went through and held the bellows in position. And here we have the focus mount. That's unusually clean. Uh, the grease that's in there is an unusual colour. It's, uh, it's white, so it's probably a lithium grease. It's probably been re-lubricated in... Um, comparatively modern times, by that I mean probably sometime in the last 30 years. So I'm just checking that this piece here now, I didn't bother marking a scribe line on here, um, 
Given the state of those screws, I know that that had shifted. Um, I can see multiple marks here where the screw heads had bitten into it. There is no special reason to believe that it was in a correctly focused position before I took it apart. Here. This has been taken apart before. I've got three scribed lines here and three scribed lines on the outside at that point. They bear no relation to each other, so I know that the inner and outer are not where they originally began. Most likely those would have been scribed across that face when this face was level. We'll put it back there and see what happens. See if that appears to be the case. Whack that way another notch. This is a multi-start thread, so... Right. Okay. So at that point, the inner and outer are level, or very close to it, and our three lines line up nicely. There's another scribe line over here at this point. And there's, there's an extra mark here at this point. Now, very likely, that extra mark determined the infinity position. I would say I'm guessing here, but um, repairers tend to use similar techniques because uh, there's only one ideal, really. And as you improve things, you will become much the same. Alright, so that's interesting. All of these parts can be cleaned up now. And then I'll start putting everything back in the body. I'm not expecting to find anything particularly interesting. Um, I can see that the struts here, looking at these struts, the inner arms of the struts should be flat. They should be nice and square at the ends to here, but they should be flat. One of them looks quite good, one of them's got a bit of a bow to it. The outer arms here, they should have a bit of a dish in them. They should be further apart at the ends than they are at the pivot point. And that provides some spring tension to help pop these clips into place when you pull the bellows out to the open position. Otherwise there'd be nothing to impel these little pins into position. So a little bit of straightening up work there but nothing major. I'm just looking at the state of these to see if there's any movement at this point which would mean that the struts had been twisted, bent so that the slot was wider than it should be and that, that side was very good. I could see no movement and there's no real movement over here either. So that's good. It means the struts are in good condition basically. They should clean up well and go back together fairly easily. So most of this stuff is now going to go into the degreaser and then into the ultrasonic cleaner. And the other components I'll clean simply with cotton buds using naphtha, which is cigarette lighter fluid. And uh, then it can be reassembled. Of course, I'll have to service the shutter and everything else, rangefinder, etc., separately.